Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the default keyboard shortcuts in Reaper. Now, in the previous video, we went over in the edit menu the default keyboard shortcuts in this menu. And I also mentioned that there are other default keyboard shortcuts that are editing actions that are not in here. And we're going to go over those in this video. Let's go over here to the actions menu, show action list, and let's type in under find shortcut on PC, Alt Shift C, and a Mac, Option Shift C. And that's going to bring up this action. Here's the keyboard shortcut, and here's the action it's going to trigger. Create measure from time selection, detect tempo, and detect number of measures. Now, one thing to consider when looking at the default keyboard shortcuts is that a lot of times there are similar actions to it right nearby, like this one and this one. So it's a good idea to look through them in case another similar action is more useful to you. You can either change it to the default keyboard shortcut or just add your own right over here. Let's check out the default one. Create measure from time selection. So if we go over to the section over here, let's select somewhere between bar eight and bar nine. And let's say we wanted to designate it as a separate measure from here to here, trigger the keyboard shortcut on the PC, Alt Shift C, and on the Mac, Option Shift C. And the Reaper creates a measure from the time selection. And it puts in our tempo changes to make that possible, right here and right here. And it labels it from bar nine to bar 10. Before, it looks like this. And after, it looks like this. And it'll work the same way with multiple measures. Let's undo that. And let's select from here to here. Hit that keyboard shortcut, and that created two measures and added a tempo in the beginning and the end to make that happen, creating two measures in the process. Now, there's many different reasons to use this. For example, let's say we have a stray piece of audio. Let's copy it and paste it over here. Let's make it smaller. Let's say we wanted to make this its own measure. Hold down shift and double click it. It creates a time selection based on the item size. Hit that keyboard shortcut and it created its own measure that fits perfectly with this item. Again, creating a tempo change in the beginning and the end to make it work without altering anything going on over here. Next, we're going to check out setting the loop points. And we could do that with the keys on the keyboard, these ones right here, which are basically the open or closed brace or squiggly or curly brackets. And we'll hit them while holding down the shift key. Let's go back to the action list and type in shift open brace. And that shows us this action, loop points set start point triggered by this keyboard shortcut. And for the close brace right here, it's going to set the end point. So this is useful if we put our cursor, say right here, hold on shift, open brace, and that sets the loop start point. If we click over here and hit the keyboard shortcut, shift, close brace, and that sets the end point for our loop. So now our project is going to loop like this. Now, of course, it's a lot quicker to create loops just by dragging right here or down here to create loops just like that. But there are some benefits to using the keyboard shortcuts. For one, we could do it on the fly. So if we hit play and hit those keyboard shortcuts, open brace, close brace, it sets that loop point on the fly. And we could do it 
over and over again. If we change our mind, we can keep resetting the start point and the same with the end point. To keep extending our loop points on the fly. This is also useful when we're creating custom actions, which are multiple actions triggered at the same time. For example, if we put our cursor right here and hit tab, it tabs to each transient each time. But we can create a custom action to create a loop with that. So we can tab once, hold down shift and the open bracket, and that creates the start of a loop. Hit tab again, hit shift, close bracket, and that creates a loop based on two different transients. And we can add to it by tabbing and extending our loop point, just like that. So it's kind of useful to use a keyboard shortcuts instead of just dragging like this. So next we have the Z key. Type it in, and it brings up this action. Move edit cursor to next zero crossing an item. And it's also related to this action which is shift Z. Move edit cursor to previous zero crossing in items. Now the purpose of these two actions is if you're editing really close up, like this bass track, as we get really close, notice the waveform is very wide, which is typical with a bass or kick sound, anything with low end information. And if we were to split this item right here, and delete this piece, we're gonna hear a click in the audio right here. And it'd be the same thing if we split it over here. We're gonna hear a click because the audio doesn't end at zero on this line. So to make that smoother, when we place our cursor, we could hit Z and then our cursor moves to the next zero setting or shift C to go to the previous one. So we can move forward to the next zero setting and then split it and delete this piece, giving us a very smooth ending to our cut. Or go to the previous ones with Shift C. And again, splitting it, deleting this side to get a smooth entrance on our sound. And the next action. I want to show you is the delete key. Now you probably already figured out what it does. You can select an item, hit delete, and it removes that item from the track or from the project. But it's a bit different than cutting or copying, as it doesn't add it to our clipboard. So if we cut this instead, we can then paste it over here. Where if we deleted it, it just gets removed, not added to the clipboard. And like with cut or copy, it's going to be based on our focus. So if we select a track, hit delete, it's going to delete that track. Or if we select an item, it's going to delete that item. Or if we select a point in an envelope, it's just going to delete that point. Or any points we select. It gets deleted, but not added to the clipboard. Next, we're going to check out the keyboard shortcuts, shift left arrow and shift right arrow. Type it in, and that opens up this action. Time selection, move cursor left, creating time selection. And for the shift right arrow, time selection, move cursor right, creating time selection. So if we put our cursor right here, hit shift, left arrow, it creates a time selection and extends it to the left. I'm holding down the key right now. And if we use the right arrow, it'll create a time selection by moving it to the right. And we can move it to the left again to shorten it or to the right to extend it. Now it's important to note, if we already have a time selection like this, we put our cursor right here and use these keyboard shortcuts, it's going to delete 
the first time selection and create a new one to the left or to the right. So if we just want to extend the time selection we already have, we should use different keyboard shortcuts. And we would do that with these two keys right here, which are the comma key and the period key. Or if we hold down shift, it's the left or right angle brackets. So let's create a time selection like this. Let's say we want to extend the left side of the time selection in the same way, but without creating a new one. Let's say our cursor is over here, but we still want to extend the left side of the time selection. On PC, it's Control Shift, and on Mac, it's Command Shift. And then we'll use the left or right angle brackets. If we move it to the left, it extends the time selection to the left or to the right, it makes the time selection shorter while adjusting the left side. Now, if we want to adjust the right side of the time selection, we would just add in on the PC, the Alt key or the Mac, the Option key. So on PC, it'll be Control, Alt, Shift. And on Mac, it'll be Command, Option, Shift. And then we could adjust the right side of the time selection. Make it longer or shorter using the left or right angled brackets along with the modifiers. Now it's important to note with these keyboard shortcuts, we're not going to create a time selection. So if we use them now, nothing happens. The left angle or right angle brackets, it doesn't create a time selection. So if we want to create the time selection, we would use the shift arrows like this to the left or to the right. But if we just want to adjust an existing time selection, we would use the left or right angle brackets. Again, control shift on the PC or command shift on the Mac to do the left side, moving it to the left or the right, or to adjust the right side on the PC, control alt shift, and on the Mac, command option shift. And we can readjust the left or right angle brackets like this to the right or to the left. And we could hold it down to move them continuously. Now, if we just wanted to nudge the entire time selection, both the left and right sides together, we could just use the comma and period keys, the same keys without holding down shift. Hit the comma key to move the whole thing to the left or the period key to move the whole thing to the right, keeping the size of the time selection the whole time, just adjusting the start and end. Although we could also hold on the shift key and just drag in the ruler like this. And if we want to move it based on the length of the time selection, we could do that as well. Let's create a time selection from here to here. Let's say we wanted to move it by this length. Hold down shift and use the left or right angle brackets. Move it to the right to move it forward by that length, or left to move it back by that length. And this is really useful as you're working through the song, creating loops along the way. For example, if we select this item, hold down shift and double click, it creates a time selection based on the item length. And let's say we wanted to work on one bar at a time. If we want to jump to the next bar, just use that keyboard shortcut to do it. Shift, left or right, angle brackets. We can move it forward and work on bar four to five, going forward or backwards through our project. And we could do this on the fly. So if we wanted to work on this bar and have it loop, it's going to keep looping until we hit that keyboard shortcut. Then it'll jump forward to the next bar and loop that bar. Hit it again to go forward, and that's going to loop that bar. So it's very useful for working section by section based on the time selection length. Now you're probably noticing that I'm clearing my time selection with a keyboard shortcut. 
And we could do that with the escape key. If we create a time suction and want to clear it, just hit the escape key to clear that time selection. Now it's important to realize we could also use the escape key to close our dialogs. Like dynamic split, hit escape, it closes it, or nudge, hit escape, to close it, or any dialog that's open. Like render, so to clear our time selections, or any open dialog at the time, depending on which is in focus. So that's pretty much it. Those are the edit keyboard shortcuts in Reaper. In the next video, we're going to check out the keyboard shortcuts in the view menu. Thanks.